Hi everyone and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to my spoiler review and book chat for Outlander by Diana Gablin. Thank you so much for joining me. This is the first installment of my Outlander series. Um, I have my notes, I have a drink in case I get parched, and I'm really excited to be discussing this book with you today. Um, first off, I wanted to start with my feelings about this series and how I came to the book, um, just to kind of give you some context of what's happening. Um, first off, obviously you can see by this video length, go ahead and grab yourself a cup of tea, you know, go ahead and get yourself a snack because we're going to settle in and this is going to be good. The reason for this series, as I shared in my um, announcement video, which if you haven't seen, you've just come across this, you can check it out up there. Um, I really want to dive into one of my favorite series that I've ever read. Um, I mean, it's still going on right now, but I wanted to create an atmosphere and an opportunity to really dive into this and really share a lot of my thoughts that I have. So I first came upon Outlander in, I want to say it was 2015. I had first moved to Fargo and I was living on my own. I promise this won't take that long. Um, and I didn't have any internet yet. <laughs> and I had heard about the Outlander books. I had you know, seeing them everywhere, it was ramping up because the first half of the first season was already out. And again, I was living um, on my own for a little bit and I didn't have any internet. So I went ahead and bought the first half of the first season on DVD. And I watched it in about two days. <laughs> and then I went and picked up the first book and I read it because I had to know what happened. The whole first season was out, but the next part of it wasn't out on DVD yet. So, cause if you guys know, if you were people who, you know, have been in this series for a while, there was a year between the first half and second half of the show. <laughs> and anyway, so I picked up the book and I loved it. And, uh, it was amazing to find out what happened and to experience these characters in a deeper way. So it was the show that brought me to the books, but I have totally on the book train. Um, the way that that affects me though is I do in general see the characters as portrayed in the show except for a few characters which we'll get into when they appear later on. But I just fell in love with Diana's writing. I fell in love with Diana. I don't know if you've you know ever looked up any interviews with her but she is such a sassy and amazing um, elderly woman. I don't want to say elderly but like older woman who you know like she didn't start writing until she was in her 30s and she came up with one of the coolest ideas a lot of us had ever heard of. So um, for this I'll assume you already know the intro since this is a spoiler review and discussion for this. So how I really want to structure these is I'm going to go over the things I love, I'm going to go over things I didn't love, um, I'll go over trigger warnings which I'm actually going to do first here and then just kind of like other things that popped into my mind. I don't have my annotated version of this one right now because my friend Joe has it. Um, and I haven't received it back from her yet, where I took tons of notes, but for my Dragonfly and Amber, I have very detailed notes for that one. Um, but I, yeah, so first off, like trigger warnings for this, the main and biggest one in the entire thing is rape and sexual assault. Um, that is what comes up the most, especially in book one, because of the extensive um, male rape scene at the end of the book. What happens to Jamie. Um, that's a deterrent for a lot of people. That's a deterrent for a lot of people to continue the show. Um, my sister who tried watching it before, I had already kind of like shared the show with her and she didn't want to continue because she like knew about that scene. So this time around, I actually made her a list of like episode by episode, anything that she might want to skip time for a little bit because not everybody wants to live through that. Like it's horrible. Well, Nobody does, but I mean like visually to have that put on you is pretty intense and in the book it is also just as intense, but the actors do such amazing. I mean, we'll talk about that when I do my TV review, which for me will just be in a little bit because I'm filming both of these the same day, but it's hard. So those are the trigger warnings. Those are mostly the trigger warnings. There's some like gore and body horror warnings as well because Claire is a nurse and she helps 
in some pretty serious situations, but they're generally taken at a very scientific way. And so, you know, it's not written in a horror form at all. Um, yeah, so those that's the main trigger warning is to watch out for those things. Um, next, let's go through the things I love and talk about some of them. So first off, I want to talk about Claire, who we are experiencing this entire first book exclusively from her point of view, um, which is so nice. And uh, she's so amazing. She is such a sassy woman. I look at it now and it's weird for me because now I'm the same age as she is at the beginning of this series. And I try to think how I would react. And a lot of the times when we get so mad at her for different things she'll do where you're just like, Claire, you're in a different time. Stop doing this. Stop acting like this. But at the same time, I feel like a scientific woman as she is, is just so frustrated that people are so superstitious, that they lean so much on like, um, that God is demanding this or that she's a witch because she knows things. And that's frustrating for us too, because we're like, this woman is only doing good, but even the good like scares people sometimes. And I just love that she's not afraid to do that, even though at times you're like, you are making things so difficult for everyone, particularly Jamie, because he is, fate is tied to yours, and it's just, I can't handle it sometimes. But I, over the all, I mean, this series doesn't work if you don't love Claire and if you can't put yourself in her shoes, because otherwise, why would you stay, right? Um, next, let's just move on to Jamie. I have this not done in like order of favorites, but a little different. What an amazing character from the beginning. And, you know, he is a young man. The craziest part too is like, as we build like Jamie's timeline, like we learn more about him, like before and after, dude has had a crazy life and he's only 22. And granted your life kind of like takes off a lot faster when you're living in this time and you're considered an adult when you're like 15 years old but boy has lived through some stuff and not even talking about his back-to-back -back whippings that happened via blackjack just oh my gosh the things that he's lived through and then he meets this woman who he's really attracted to but she's married and then or she says she's married too, which I mean, he believes her, but also, you know, she doesn't have this husband anymore. And she kind of tells people that he's dead in the beginning, because how else can she explain it? I mean, he doesn't exist at this current time. So is he dead? Or, you know, where do her loyalties still lie when she's trying to keep herself alive? And I think it's a really interesting question. And every time I reread this book, I try to come at it from Frank's perspective, even though we end up not really caring about him at all. Like we can have sympathy for him and I do have sympathy for him because how would that have been if your wife just disappeared out of thin air and everyone's telling you she just left you for somebody else? What are you supposed to think, you know? And what I do like about the book is we never see his perspective and that's something we'll talk about when we talk about the TV show and what they decided to do with that. Um, but it, it helps us not to think of him in, in except for situations where he gets brought up to Claire and I kind of like that because I mean we're sorry for Frank but these two are together and they're meant to be together like I don't think anyone really disputes that um and in regards to the time travel you know did this time does time travel exist to bring you to the places you're supposed to be to me that's how it reads um especially if the only context you had was this first book and she doesn't know if she can go back but she is put in this place with this guy but I was talking about Jamie I told you this is gonna be long the tangents are gonna go all over the place with this but Jamie is so complex and I feel like in Outlander he's a little less shades of gray like we were told he's an outlaw we're told these things that he's done but a lot of the things that he's done at this point is wrong place wrong time he's Scottish he you know, a certain person, Blackjack Randall, pinpoints him as an object of desire, and that causes a lot of the problems that he has. And so when we meet him in Outlander, a lot of the misfortune he has is just that. Like, not really any of it is things that he did 
to himself. It was wrong place, wrong time. Being a passionate Scottish patriot and that putting him on the wrong side of the British. And he hasn't done anything to really earn that status besides that. And so he's a much more pure version of him than we'll see going forward. And there's something about that that, I mean, you can talk about, you know, it's one thing to say like him, Claire and Jamie are drawn together because they're both hot and they both have chemistry. But there's underlying things about him that, I mean, the marriage was forced for Claire. Like she, she thought he was good looking and he was becoming a good friend to her, but there was never going to be any more than that until Dougal forces them into that. But the way Jamie takes that, <clears throat> takes this forced marriage and just lays himself bare to her continually, even as she makes things more difficult for him, even though he's an outlaw on the run and having a wife who's English is not going to help him in any way. He sacrifices of himself to marry her and save her life. He saves her life from Blackjack by marrying her. And he's just so good. And the things that come out of his mouth is... I mean, it's what romance novels are made of. Like, there's a reason he has the moniker King of Men, okay? That's not accidental. Jamie's amazing. Um, next I have in here are the dangers. And I want to kind of go over some of those. Um, specifically, I mean, we'll start with Blackjack because he's the main antagonist in this. Like, Claire number one would probably be back with Frank if not for him because different situations that happen push her further and further away from that happening and her needing, you know, the situation she's put out in the beginning wouldn't be happening if those guys weren't being chased by the British and then, you know, Black Jack tries to rape her. The first interaction we have with her, that's his default to get answers out of people is to try to stick his dick in it, which we could say that about a lot of different situations but anyway and it's heartbreaking and terrifying that we run into this person um the ways that he tries to break jamie and through jamie claire are just they're so hard like i read those parts of the book with one eye and i try not to let it sink into my soul but this man is just so terrifying. And then the other dangers, the dangers of just an illness being able to um, take you out so easily. Dana said one of the, you know, nice handy things is making Claire a nurse because she has a little, you know, she has a lot more knowledge than people do in the 1700s. And it might be handy to have someone who knows about infection and who knows about those things to kind of protect the characters we love. But her experience is also a danger to her because she knows things that are not discovered yet. And it makes her, her being able to heal in a situation that someone else can't makes her seem magical. And some people in Scotland were okay with that and other people saw it as evil, um, that she's from the devil. And it's crazy to me because she's healing people. How is healing from the devil? I mean especially these people who claim to be so faithful and hold God so high up that they wouldn't believe in healing and a miracle of it is just, oh, it's so frustrating to me. So frustrating. Um, yeah, so the accusations of witchcraft, the whole situation we get in with Galus Duncan, like, oh, it's so heart-wrenching. And the way that Jamie saves her from that situation where he says, I have this bond with me and God. And if you try to take Claire from me, you're going to have to go through me because God has given her to me. And I just, oh, I love that so much. And I love how Jamie is a man of faith. Like he really does believe and he's faithful, but his, but his mind is also open because he's traveled a little and he's seen things and he knows that not everything can be explained. And those unique abilities in him are what make him able to accept when Claire finally opens up and tells him that she's from another time because he's seen the evidence in her. He's seen how she reacts to situations and who she is as proof that this is true. And I love that about him, that he can be so open to that. It's amazing. Um, next, how the relationship is built. Okay, 
So Claire and Jamie have one of my favorite relationships ever. And I've said this, I've said it in so many videos I've done. I've said it already in this. And what I want to get, you know, maybe some of your opinions on and see how you feel about it is the progression of it. I love that in a sense, they were friends first. Their first interaction, Claire fixes his shoulder and then has to ride with him on a horse for, for like a day or two. Um, and they have this kind of like, this kind of like, <laughs> from Claire's point of view anyway, kind of this like hate flirting. And it's not even a hate. I know that's a strong word to use, but kind of this like conflicting, you know, cause he is going to keep his duty and he's going to make sure she doesn't run away. But yet it's still, there's this sexy chemistry between them. And, um, when she is tending to him, when they get back to Castle Leoc and, um, there's that situation where he like gets a boner while she's helping him. And she has this moment of like, if I wasn't married, this guy though. And, <laughs> you know, it's, it's pretty great. Just how that chemistry is set up early on. And even though, you know, like everybody knows who's ending up together in this story, there's still that will they, won't they, like, how are we going to get around this? And Claire is so certain she's going back to her husband. What would be the thing that's going to make them marry each other? And I remember thinking that when I was watching the the show, because I watched the first half of the show first and thinking, how are we going to get to this point where this woman who's so determined to go back to her husband ends up shacked up with this guy? And I love how Diana found a way to make that happen. And so when this situation of them being forcibly wed comes about, it still feels like we were always going to end up here and that Jamie's the perfect person for this to happen. She could have been married off to Rupert, right? Like that could have happened. But Jamie was the one picked because, you know, the Mackenzies wanted more power over him and Dougal wanted to, you know, move him out of the line of succession and whatever that is. Things could have worked out differently and Claire would have still been trying to get back to Frank. But Jamie's like innocence and like pure joy in that relationship of like, he didn't think he was going to get to have a wife because of the life he lives. And then when there's this opportunity for him to save this beautiful woman and friend, like they're friends at this point, he takes it and he gives him himself, gives of himself selflessly. Didn't say that exactly right. It is such a beautiful character moment for him. And then um, that whole wedding night, which everybody loves. Okay, everybody loves that. We're happy they're having sex, but really they're forging those bonds and the bonds aren't tight yet right? Like there's still times now where Claire's thinking of leaving because sex is great. She's having a great time with him. He's got a great body. She's got a great body. He's learning things. He's very enthusiastic because it's brand new. But for her, like her loyalty is still to Frank and she's trying to get back to him. And she feels bad that she's married to Jamie because she's going to leave him still. Those are her plans. And you're like, Every time through this book, you're just like, oh, just give up on Frank. Nobody cares about Frank. We don't want him. We don't love him. But what would you do? You were married to this man for eight years and you you loved him. And you have this new husband now who his life is more complicated for having you. And this is a dangerous time to live in. And so if this relationship isn't formed the way it is, if they didn't have this deep soul, physical and mind connection that they did, why would Claire choose to stay? Like one of my favorite lines, and it's so flippant, but so heartbreaking is like when she's trying to make the decision whether to stay with him or not. And she says, the hot baths almost won out. Like that said so funny, but think about it. We all are goo goo gaga over Jamie, but would you give up the modern conveniences you had? Having a toilet, having hot water, having makeup, having... Um, a comfortable bed all the time, having a stable job, knowing you'll always get to eat. If you were giving up all those things just for a hot body, like wouldn't you need more, you know? And, and I love that Diana builds that. By the time there, she Claire makes the decision she's staying, you believe it. You understand that she's willing to take all these things that come with the past to have this man and have this relationship that he's her soulmate. And a little part that I do like to touch on, and um, not a lot of you will know this about me. A few people do because I mentioned it in another video, but physical touch is my love language. And I mean, it definitely is Jamie and Claire's as well. But I don't just mean that in 
like the sexual term because physical touch has way more to do than just sexual. If that was my love language, that wouldn't be good because you can't go around having sex with every person you like. It has more to do with comfort and feeling at home with someone and being able to hold their hand or hug them or pat their back and know that you're loved by that person. And Jamie and Claire form that connection and it is forged on their wedding night. And it's something you see that whenever they're fighting, whenever they're having bad times, it usually has to do with them being connected, disconnected, not only emotionally, but physically as well. And it's something that um, I think Diana does really subtly and really well of like, it's even shown like after their wedding night where they have, you know, whatever best sex they've ever had. It's great. It's fabulous. We love it. The next day, they've lost some of the intimacy because they're not able to sit and like hold hands and, and have that connection like vibrating through the two of them. And whenever they have really bad situations, there will be like one of them will just like kiss the other person. And, you know, it's like, oh, you're ending the argument with sex. And it's like, no, they're ending the argument with connection. And you're reminding yourself that you need it. And the most heartbreaking thing, the most devastating thing is when blackjack takes that away for a time because he's made it so jamie can't be touched he can't enjoy that and and now when they have fights and things are stressful he doesn't want that connection um we see that acted out more in the second book and that is such a great chasm that Blackjack hacks between the two of them is because now the way that they come back together, the way that they heal the day's hurts was sex, was connection, was intimacy. And Blackjack has twisted that. And their road healing from that is painful. And to me, that relationship that was carefully built between physical, mental, and emotional things is now lost one of its legs for a while. And we don't dwell on that too much. Um, and some people will say it's done over too fast. I don't think that it is. Like there's a time skip between the first and the second and they still, you know, he's still struggling with that. He's still struggling with it many books in the future. It just comes in flashes. It's not a constant pain, but it's something he thinks about very often, which I think it would be. I've never been assaulted like that, but friends of mine who have, it comes back at random times. It's not a consistent pain, but it's it's more a poke that when you step wrong, you feel it again. And anyway, I have so much respect for the relationship Diana built and then how it goes through struggles and how it needs to be rebuilt. And I love it. So the last aspect I'll talk about in this one um, is the way that this story takes its time. As you will know, all of her books are ginormous. They're all over 600 pages in the main series anyway. And I love that she takes her time. I love that I know these people so well. I love that I know how they'll react in every situation because I know their character. These aren't just characters in a story. They have character. That's why they feel like real people. That's why you want to believe that there was a Claire and Jamie Fraser who lived in 1740s because they feel like people you would know. Besides having those superstar attributes that make them swoony and perfect for us, they are just amazing. They're so well built and all the downtimes we get, all the quiet moments where Jamie says his swoony things, like it builds that. And it builds the tension through the story, like our fear of what's going to happen in the future. That's something that, you know, is able to happen in every book because there's always some new tragedy that's coming ahead of us. And does Claire know enough to protect her family? Does she know enough about this future um, that she lived in, but maybe wasn't paying attention to, to be able to help a little? And those are questions that we're left with at the end of this book. Now that we know that she's decided to stay, what are we really facing, you know, and what's going to happen for our beloved characters? So, well, that's going to be it for this um, kind of more of just a chat. This isn't so much a review. All these books are five stars for me, by the way. 
Sorry. I'm not sorry. Um, down below, let me know your thoughts. Tell me if there's any more aspects you'd like to discuss. And um, the next video in this series will be reviewing Outlander season one and how it compared to the book. Um, you know, my pros and cons of it and where I think they could have done more or less. And I'm really excited for that. So I hope you'll check that out. Um, my normal videos are out on Mondays and Thursdays. And you can check some of those videos out right now. Bye.